hi everyone in today's video i will explain in detail the procedure of making a deviation card on ships here i am assuming that you all know what a deviation card is for what is deviation what is magnetic deviation today's video is only focusing on how to make a deviation card all right I have addressed this briefly in a separate video of mine, the link of which is in the description section below. That video was linked to the magnetic compass videos. You can watch that as well together with this video. But in this video, I will explain the practical process of how to make a deviation card. And then I will show you an example of a deviation card and what it may look like. All right. And how do we put in the values that we find from this procedure? So let's understand what is the procedure in detail. All right. So to make a deviation card, you have to use a fixed object to take the bearing off. That fixed object could be a lighthouse. All right. It could be a recon, something on land, a fixed object, or it could be two objects in a line. Something we call is a transit a transit bearing you can use that as well something to take a bearing of i'll tell you why what is important or why is it important all right now let's say you have a lighthouse or a recon fixed on the land and this is somewhere your ship is here all right doesn't have to be very close otherwise it's dangerous you could be at anchorage swinging the vessel around or you could be moving and you could have slowed down and just swinging the vessel around we'll talk about that as well how to swing the vessel around and uh, what should be the swing radius but let me first explain the procedure otherwise i get deviated and you know you guys will say you know he's talking about one thing and now he gets deviated all right so let's say that on the bridge wing here and this is i'm giving you a bird's eye view here right so you have the gyro compass together with the repeaters right and you also i'll use a different color pen just to explain the difference and you also have a magnetic compass on the monkey island you don't have any repeaters for magnetic compass but you also have the magnetic compass on the monkey island right so the procedure here is that one officer should be stationed with the gyro compass or one of its repeaters only one place you, you don't have to be in every place However, you should be able to take a 360 degree bearing as the vessel swings around. You should be able to take a bearing of the particular object. That object could be this lighthouse here. So as the vessel swings around on its turning radius, if you are standing on the starboard bridge wing and you feel that you will not be able to take a bearing on the port bridge wing, then you must have someone on the port bridge wing as well or in the center repeater. Magnetic compass, however, will not have any issues because it's on the monkey island and the view is pretty much 360 degrees you should be able to take a bearing so the second officer i mean the second one officer all right has to be on the magnetic compass so one officer at the magnetic compass here and one officer has to be with the gyro compass or if you need two officers with the gyro compass then two officers someone who should be able to take the bearing of that object right now what do we do as we approach the lighthouse so let me show you here so let's say this is the lighthouse or let's say this is a fixed object a recon of you're taking a bearing of all right now as you as you approach this lighthouse as the vessel you will of course swing the vessel around to take the bearing of the lighthouse for different headings of the vessel all right i'll explain all that don't worry different headings of the vessel and you keep the radius of this turning circle radius of this turning circle to a minimum because as the turning circle becomes larger or bigger errors will creep in now you cannot avoid this it's very hard to avoid it because it's a moving vessel at the end of the day it's not a stationary vessel so errors will creep in but what we do is we try to keep the radius of our turning circle so to just about less than a mile if possible you know, I have practically done it. It's a bit hard. It's not that easy, but uh, we try to keep it the radius as small as possible. Let me put it that way. Sometimes some captains do it at anchorage and uh, they do it at anchorage, try to swing the vessel around, but it's hard to do that as well because sometimes uh, you don't, you're not able to keep the vessel steady for too long to take the bearing, but we'll talk, don't worry about all that. So we try to 
if we are the vessel is moving we try to swing the vessel around and keep the radius of the turning circle to a minimum all right less than a mile is ideal then the errors creeping in will be less and as the vessel swings around for different headings you will note the readings and calculate the deviation i'll show you how all right so when i say different headings in today's example the deviation card i will show you the heading has been calculated let let me show you all right so let me show you an example of a deviation card so you see the deviation card here right so here you can see the ship's heading or the course so the deviation has been calculated for every 10 degrees 0 0 0 0 1 0 0 2 0 0 3 0 so on and so forth till of course 3 6 0 so part of the uh, table has got blocked with the drawing because the drawing is more important i'll tell you later so you can calculate it for every 10 degrees all right or it's up to the master you as the master or if you are the junior officer then up to your master the master might say every 20 degrees or every 15 degrees so as long as it is divisible by 360 that's fine all right it's up to the master what he or she wants to do right so for every heading you will calculate the deviation so how do we do that so going back to the diagram here right so again i repeat myself you have a gyro compass someone stationed at the gyro compass and with the repeaters and someone taking a magnetic compass and repeaters so as you approach the object or as you approach the lighthouse you will take one true bearing with the gyro compass so true bearing of what the lighthouse right and you will take one what we call is a magnetic bearing standing at the magnetic compass all right so this is gyro compass this is the magnetic compass now remember it goes without saying the magnetic compass should have been corrected the errors should have been minimized that goes without saying you cannot have a magnetic compass with huge errors in it and uh, then try to take the bearing of it so magnetic compass magnetic compass should have been corrected with the so permanent and temporary correctors and the correction should have been brought up to a minimum all right so anyhow again i'm deviating from my topic so you will take bearing say let's say for a heading of ship's heading or course of zero 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 degrees you take a true bearing of the lighthouse and you take a magnetic bearing so there has to be two people who to do that you can't have the same person doing the uh, calculate uh, you know taking the bearings because it has to be taken at the same time as soon as the vessel is steady on the course of zero 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 you will calculate the you will just take the bearing the true bearing as well as the magnetic bearing now let's say when the vessel was on zero 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 course your true bearing of the object was zero six five degrees true and the magnetic bearing some people call it compass bearing you can do that magnetic bearing or magnetic compass bearing was zero seven zero degrees magnetic or what we the ship's compass is called the compass all right compass bearing now don't ask me the difference because i have explained this difference in a separate video so you get two two bearings one using the gyro true bearing and one using the magnetic compass on the ship that is the compass bearing now the difference between these two bearings will give you what it will give you your compass error right so you get your compass error so in this case it is five degrees west because the compass bearing is more than the true bearing so your error is five degrees west now in any part of the sea that you are taking these bearings or you are navigating the ship or you're turning the ship around it will have a variation information on the chart itself right you know that already you are navigators you know that variation information is available on the chart so you of course use the variation which is closest to the ship's position so if there is a compass rose here and there is a compass rose here then of course this compass rose which is closer to the ship you will use this variation all right if you are in the middle of two compass roses you can take a mean of the two values but you take the variation which is closest to your ships all right so let's say here the variation was three degrees west right so of course in this case your deviation would be two degrees west right so this is how you get the deviation for a course or a heading of zero 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 degrees right this is an example so when you go back to the compass card in front of zero 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 you will note down the deviation whichever you calculate 
all right you can note down in this case i would note down two degrees west that was my calculation this is of course a deviation card which has was made separately so so they have noted down now what is missing in this deviation card is there is no east or west written ideally you should have something like east or west you know written here you should have that written all right so you should write that so similarly you keep turning your vessel and for every 10 degrees of course or 15 degrees or 20 degrees as decided you will calculate the deviation for a change of the course you will take a true bearing and a magnetic bearing or a compass bearing rather of the same object when the vessel is steady on the course when the vessel is steady on the heading so it cannot be while it's swinging now on the ship what happens is you know as soon as we steady we we just keep rotate we just keep turning the ship around not rotating but turning the vessel around and for a few seconds as soon as it steadies we take the reading and then quickly we turn it around so it's very hard that's why i say it's not easy so that's why what we normally do is we hardly steady the ship as the vessel is turning uh, for as soon as the vessel touches the heading of 000, we quickly take the bearing. That's why need. That's why we need all hands on deck. We need more than you know two or three officers who quickly keep taking the bearings, uh, as they are told, because it's hard for you to steady the vessel, take the bearing, then again steady the vessel. By then the turning circle becomes very large. Especially these days, ships are very fast. So if you wait for the ship to become steady for every 10 degrees, by the time you take the bearings, you note the bearings. Uh, you know the ship's turning circle keeps getting larger and larger anyhow when you practice it you will realize what i'm talking about but this is how you explain it to the examiner tomorrow if the examiner asks you this question right so you keep noting these bearings now remember the purpose of the deviation card the most important bit of the deviation card is the graph that you make right you see that the graph you see here these kind of graphs is what is important so when the post state or the flag state officer comes on board he quickly he will see that the deviation card is posted next to the steering compass or the autopilot. Now he'll take a quick glance or she'll take a quick glance on the deviation card just to see how your deviation card looks. Now if something looks abnormal, then of course they will point it out. Now this curve is ideally it should be a what you call a sinusoidal curve. Sinusoidal curve. All right, what does this mean? This means ideally the curve of the shape of the curve is something like this. This is what we expect the curve to be ideally be. Now many a times you may get it, but sometimes you may not get such kind of a curve. Now what happens is when I was a junior officer, I remember once I made a curve, it went something like this, you know, something like this or something like that, right? Now what I was told, and this is what of course I learned is that the curves have to be smoothed. So you got to smoothen the curve, all right? You have to smoothen the curve. So sometimes you get this kind of curve, sometimes you don't, but ideally, you should get a sinusoidal curve in perfect world in a perfect world you should get a sinusoidal curve i'm not saying that this curve this is what we honestly got so we had to swing the ship around and we had to do it a few times to get some kind of a sinusoidal curve like you see on your screens right now because sometimes you do not get a perfect curve and then you know the master doesn't like it the master wants a perfect curve of course which you don't get but you can smoothen the curves you can smoothen the errors and get a curve which looks a lot like this curve here a sinusoidal curve now this curve is the important bit in the deviation card right now ideally of course you know overall the deviation value should not be too large uh, otherwise you know you have to call a magnetic compass adjuster all that goes without saying i have discussed all that deviation on a particular heading should also not be very large all right so um, all those are all that is mentioned in the solas as well i have discussed it in the separate video so I don't want to go down that path, otherwise we'll get confused. What I want to show you here is again what a deviation card looks like. So a deviation card here will have the ship's name. Now some things are missing in this deviation card. That's why I wanted to show you an example here because I don't want to show you a perfect deviation card. Uh, so I want to show you a deviation card like this. So you will have the ship's name here and you will have the date and place here. So when I say place, that could be in a latitude or longitude, ideally, or it could mean a port, or it could mean an anchorage, right? You also, uh, of course, it will say that this is a deviation card for the magnetic compass. You have the master's name. You also can have the chief officer or the officer who has made this card. It could be the second officer or third officer's name here and they will sign it as well. Both of them will sign it. What you should also have here is the loading condition. All right, some, especially if you are on a container ship, whether you are on ballast, whether you are a fully loaded vessel, 
you know what was the condition of cargo because the cargo will have an impact on the deviation card as well especially if you are carrying iron ore or you are carrying containers now imagine being on a ship of 10,000 12,000 containers uh, imagine the ship having 10,000 containers and then imagine the ship being on ballast without 10,000 containers that will have a large impact on the deviation card so you must maintain the loading condition you should also mention the weather condition whether the ship was rolling pitching it was hard to take the bearings you can also mention the visibility all right or the object used all right so any special conditions that may have affected uh, the calculation of the deviation card you have to mention that. especially if your curve is not perfect and the surveyor if he asks you you can mention all these things all right so especially if it has impacted you know uh, doing it in a rough sea choppy seas it will definitely have an impact on your deviation card so sometimes you know you have electronic uh, versions of deviation cards available uh, you can actually create your own i created one on my own in excel uh, what is an electronic deviation card is as you put the values input the values here the this curve here will automatically change it's a simple one to construct i'm sure you guys know better than me uh, so you can see latitude and longitude is mentioned here uh, but yes uh, you put these values and the deviation keeps changing one thing i will tell you is do not try to uh, um, you know forge or bullshit uh, <laughs> what is the right word for it uh, do not try to change the values or do not try to adjust the values just to get a perfect curve do not do that if you feel that the deviation values are uh, not getting you the right curve or something is wrong with the overall deviation of the vessel or the deviation for particular headings you can let the master know and the master should ideally uh you know have another attempt at it have another go at it it doesn't take too long to calculate these deviations um, what it takes long is to swing the vessel around and take the bearings right so the master can have a go at it especially if the vessel is at anchorage or something like that so this is the procedure for making a deviation card these are the values these are the inputs which should be there in the deviation card uh, so sometimes people get confused they do not understand how to make one and this question is increasingly being asked in the oral exam questions because making the deviation card also tests your knowledge of whether you know the difference between true bearing, compass bearing, how to calculate the compass error and the deviation if the variation is given to you. So guys, let me know what you thought about this video, whether you found this video easy to understand or was it more complicated now? Did I make it worse? Uh, because I always look forward uh, to your feedback. Teaching is a tricky process. Uh, teaching uh, is only effective if the person I'm trying to teach is understanding the topic so some people understand it some people don't i always incorporate the feedback i get from my viewers i always appreciate it always helps me to improve the videos uh, some of my videos are not very good some of them are but uh, one thing i assure you i'll keep making these videos uh, with the hope that you learn something from it um, thank you very much for supporting the channel guys and i'll see you soon with my next video bye for now